So in today's lecture, I'm going to talk about the Cartan Audemars theorem. Let's recall a few things. So for the duration of the short lecture, M is a Riemannian manifold with metric R, whose dimension is equal to small m. Now the sectional curvature, let's recall that. So you define a sectional curvature at the point and at a two-dimensional subspace of your tangent space at that point. So the sectional curvature denoted by Kp sigma, in this case, is, you know, is going to be equal to R E1, E2, E2, E1, where E1, E2 is an arbitrary choice of orthonormal bases for your two-dimensional subspace sigma, and capital R here is the four-argument cur curvature tensor defined by this well-known expression. Now, uh, it's something that you know can be proved that and this, this definition of sectional curvature does not depend on the choice of orthonormal bases. As a matter of fact, there's, you, you can even define sectional curvature for any basis of uh, sigma. That's something that will come up a little bit later uh, in this lecture. Now with this, we can state the cartan Adamar theorem, which simply says that if your sectional curvatures are always non-positive, in other words, if M is non-positively curved, it happens to be simply connected and complete then M is always diffeomorphic to a copy of uh, Euclidean space. This is quite a remarkable, quite a remarkable result. Now, I'm going to give you the proof of this result, but we will first need to understand two uh, technical lemmas. So let me state them first, and I'm going to prove carton Adamar using these lemmas, and later on address, address the lemmas as well. Okay, so the first lemma says that if you're non-positively curved and complete, then geodesics on your manifold cannot have conjugate points. So any Jacobian field along uh, your any geodesic cannot, cannot have vanishing, vanishing point. Now, this uh, implies that the exponential map is always a local diffeo. So this is a result that we argued uh, the conjugate points are exactly the points where the exponential map has degenerating Jacobian. So if you do not have conjugate points, then the Jacobian of the exponential map cannot degenerate, hence it's always a local diffeo. Now surjectivity of the exponential map follows from completeness, right? So this is simply a uh, consequence of the Hopf-Rinov theorem, who, whose proof I've given in, a pre in the previous uh, video. Uh, more specifically, right, so if you're complete, then you're geodesically complete. And geodesic completeness always implies that any two points on your manifold can be joined by a geodesic, so the exponential map has to be surjective. Okay, so this is the first lemma, so let's accept this. I'll give the proof in a bit. And the lemma two is a purely technical result. So it says that if you have two Riemannian manifolds, m tilde and m prime, and a map phi between them, smooth, surjective, and M tilde happens to be complete, such that uh, phi is actually a local isomorphism, so, so local isometry. So this is what the uh, local isometry means, right? That the Jacobian of any vector V uh, has length the same as the vector V. So if you have a local isometry, then actually uh, under such circumstances, phi is always a covering map. So this is a technical result and much, much more general results can be shown. And it's not really of essence here. So I'll just invite you to look up the proof of this and, and your uh, favorite reference uh, for Riemannian geometry. One reference is, for example, Docarmo, page 150. Uh, now let's accept lemma one and lemma two, and I'm going to prove Cartan Adamar using these two lemmas. So let's just pick a point P on my manifold. And by the first lemma, the exponential map with base P is a local uh, surjective diffeomorphism. So let's pick M tilde to be just simply TPM, uh, the tangent at P, tangent space at P. And then let's pull back the Euclidean sorry, the, the metric R from M using the exponential map. Now, since X is a local diffeomorphism, 
R tilde is always going to be a Riemannian manifold, a Riemannian metric. So in particular, exp is going to be a local isometry with this, uh, the Riemannian structure formed by R tilde. Now, local isometries preserve geodesics locally. And we also know that xp, the exponential map, by definition, sends geodesic Euclidean geodesic rays from the origin of uh, uh, the tangent space to geodesics of m, right? So this means these two facts together, preserving local geodesics and sending rays to geodesics of m, means that tpm r tilde uh, if in this Riemannian structure you look at geodesics emanating from zero, they have to extend forever. So you have a point where geodesics extend forever. So Hopfrinov and its proof gives you that now TPM with this specific choice of Riemannian structure has to be complete. Moreover, we knew from before, right, another application of Hopfrinov that XP is actually a surjective map. So what do we have now? So we're, we're exactly in the situation of uh, lemma two, right? We have a smooth and surjective uh, map, xp. So phi is actually xp here. Between two uh, Riemannian manifold, the first one of them is complete. By construction, we have a local isomorphism. So what we get from lemma two is that xp is a covering map. But m, by definition, so, so by the statement of uh, the cartan hadamar theorem, was simply connected. So this means that the exponential map is not just the covering map, it actually has to be a diffeomorphism. Now TPM is a copy of R to the M, so this proves the cartan hadamar theorem. So what's left to argue is lemma one. So let me just give you the argument for that. So let's just recall the statement again. So Suppose we have a, again, a complete manifold with uh, non-positive sectional curvature, then geodesics do not have conjugate points. And as I uh, already argued before, this implies that XP is going to be a local diffeo for all points P. And in addition, it's also will have to be surjective. Okay, so we're in a complete manifold, so geodesics extend forever. So let's just take a geodesic ray and let's take a, geo, a, a Jacobi field along uh, this uh, geodesic such that the Jacobi field vanishes at zero, but it's not trivial, so its covariant derivative at zero is non-vanishing. And let's take two derivatives of the length of the Jacobi field. So if you take two derivatives, you apply the uh, product rule twice, so you get this expression. And then you see here that the second covariant derivative of Jacobi field shows up. So for that term, you use the Jacobi equation, and then you get this expression. Now, after a bit of manipulation, right, so what, what you're going to do is you're going to relate this expression here, so this four term curvature uh, tensor. Uh, argument here, you're going to re relate it to a, a sectional curvature. So the sectional curvature in the direction of gamma dot t and Jacobian of t. So there's a formula that says how you can do that. And then this is what you get. So sectional curvature at gamma t in the direction of gamma dot t and jt uh, times the length of gamma dot t wedge jt. And then, of course, we're still carrying this term with us down here. Now, let's just see if this uh, what we got, got has a sign. So, so this is just the length of a vector. So this is always positive. The sectional curvature is always non-positive. So with this negative sign here, it's always uh, going to be non-negative. And this is non-negative as well. So this whole expression is non-negative. So we get that the second derivative of uh, this expression is always positive. So this means that the first derivative has to always increase. So this is the first derivative. And this is, again, what, what the first derivative is after an application of product rule. Uh, now, what we notice is that at t equals 0, right? this is the expression for it. And then since j0 is equal to 0, 
then this expression equals zero. So if, if, if this function here is zero at zero and otherwise increasing, then that means that it has to be non-negative. Okay, what else do we know? So if, if the derivative is non-negative, then that means that the function itself is increasing. Uh, at zero, this function is equal to zero, but what else do we know? So we know that the Jacobian is zero at zero, but its covariant derivative cannot vanish at zero. So after expanding covariant derivatives uh, in local coordinates, this means that actually in a small neighborhood for the time parameter, the Jacobian field cannot vanish at all. If it would, then the Jacobian uh, would have vanishing uh, covariant derivative there. So this means, this is equivalent to saying that the length of the Jacobian for small time parameter has to be positive. But the length function of the Jacobian is actually increasing. So that means that the Jacobian has positive length everywhere. In particular, right? So if the Jacobian has positive length everywhere, for every positive t, specifically for positive t, of course, at t equals zero is zero, then gamma cannot have conjugate points, which is the desired conclusion. All right, so this wraps up the proof of the carton adamar theorem. Uh, if, if you notice some typos, please, uh, please definitely let me know in the comments. If you like the video, please like and subscribe. Thank you for your attention.